going to be talking about today is canola heated vaporization, vaporization or delta H vape. So it's your change in vaporization. So this is the energy required to, if you're vaporizing something, then what are you actually doing to the molecules to vaporize it? Separating. Separate. To separate. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, which is also equal to one mole, one mole. Good. of any substance without changing the temperature. When water changes from liquid to gas at constant pressure, energy must be supplied, but the boiling temperature remains constant. So keep in mind that what we said, and we'll take a look at a, um, at a heating curve, but basically what happens is when you're going through a phase change, you increase temperature, increase temperature, and once you're at a phase change, your temperature actually remains constant, okay? And your temperature remains constant. I call it the Britney Spears effect. I say that she doesn't have enough energy to sing and dance at the same time. So same thing. There isn't enough energy to increase temperature and change phase. So what happens is you get a plateau, which is why if you were boiling water, the temperature would actually remain at 100 degrees Celsius until all of the water is completely boiled off. Okay? So that's the, um, the idea of this. Delta H is measured in kilocalories per mole. What is a kilocalorie? So we know a calorie is the amount of heat that's needed to raise the temperature of, anybody know this? One gram of water by one degree Celsius. Good. And it is specific to water. So that's a little bit of review of calorimetry. It's important to know that a calorie, referring to the energy of food, is actually equal to 1,000 lowercase c calories, or a kilocalorie. To say that 10 grams of sugar has 41 calories means 10 grams of sugar did what to the kilocalories of heat when it's completely burned? So what has to happen if you're burning it, then what's happening to the energy? You're actually doing what? Releasing or absorbing energy? Releasing. Good. Um, releases 41 kilocalories of heat when it's burned. The delta H vape for water is 9.7 kcals per mole. So if you're vaporizing it, it says the same amount of energy is blank when gaseous molecules condense. If instead of heating it up and where you're supplying the energy and you're getting it to vaporize by getting it to boil, so you turn on the stove and you add the energy in, what if the reverse were happening and condensation was taking place? Then what would happen? Instead of energy being released, energy is now absorbed. Perfect. So the same amount of energy is actually absorbed when the molecules condense. Okay. So, this is another reminder here. If you're going from, a, if you need a freezer, for example, okay, so if a freezer would help, would help, like condensation, a freezer would help. We said that freezer, F-R-E-E-Z, is exothermic, okay? So if a freezer would help in a phase change, that's exothermic. Whereas, if you have a stove, do you remember what that would be then? A stove would be endothermic, okay? But I want you to remember, that's only if your temperature is constant. That's only if you're at a phase change and your temperature is remaining constant, okay? So if you have a phase change where something is freezing or um, something, so versus if you have um, something melting, if something's melting, then a stove would help, that would be endothermic. I want you to keep in mind, if you take a thermometer and you put a thermometer into a solution and you start to dissolve something in water and your water temperature rises, what type of reaction was that? exothermic. Why? Heat is being released. From the reaction, heat is being released. So you stick a thermometer in there and your temperature goes up. We said that's exothermic. So what would your sign of delta H be in that case? Negative. Perfect. Okay. If your temperature goes down, that's endothermic. But remember, in a phase change, your temperature is not changing. It's remaining constant. And so if it's remaining constant, you have to use a different thing. And that's where I use the stove and the freezer um, instead to try to remember that. Okay, it says for dinner you decide that you want to boil some potatoes. So you fill a pot with 250 mils of water, 250 grams. You got to watching friends, you never put the potatoes in, and all the water is evaporated. How much energy did it take to boil the water to dryness? And they're giving you your delta age of eight. They're also giving you grams. This is a review question. So what are we looking for? We're looking for how much energy, but that's not a unit. What unit would be... The, a good unit to use here that we're looking for? Kilocalories. Kilocalories. Because that energy is in kcals, let's use kcals. Okay? We've got two places to start. If you're ending with one unit, you should be starting, starting with one unit. So let's start with the 250 grams. And this is just water. It's H2O. 
So crash units opposite, grams, and where do we go from grams? To moles, and water is 18.0, uh, or 18.012 uh, if you're using hydrogen as 1.02, grams per mole. And now I'm in moles, so now what can I use? <laughs> moles to grams, and so how do I, uh, moles to what? Kilocalories, and how do I go moles to kilocalories? 9.70, awesome. All right, so we're gonna multiply and divide this. I get 134.57, three, six figs, so we're gonna go 135 kcals is how much energy it took, okay? Sum up, vapor pressure is the pressure exerted by a vapor in equilibrium, we talked about that. The vapor pressure of a liquid depends on two things. It depends on the nature of the liquid, And what else does it depend on? How do you know how much vapor you are going to have above the liquid? Well, it's called the vapor pressure. The what? Surrounding pressure. That is the pressure. That's the vapor pressure. What does it depend on? Your temperature. Awesome. It depends on the nature of the liquid and the temperature. So as you increase your temperature, you're going to get more vapor, right? You're going to get more gas, more liquid converting into gas. And so it always depends on two things. Now when we say the nature of the liquid, anybody know what three letters I'm basically talking about when we're talking about the nature of the liquid? Solid. Um, IMF. IMFs. Perfect. The nature of the liquid means it's IMFs, okay? So if you have a cup of water at room temperature, you have mercury in a thermometer at room temperature, and you have a tree at room temperature. All three of those, and maybe you have a, a balloon filled with helium gas. All of those are all in their phases, in that particular phase at room temperature, all because of their IMFs, okay? So when you talk about the nature of the liquid, it's just talking about just its intermolecular forces that it has. Because if it has stronger forces, then it's going to be harder to pull those molecules apart from each other. If it has weaker forces, then it's easier to pull those apart from each other. Okay, and as one temperature, at any one temperature, different liquids have different vapor pressure, so that's the case. And then as your temperature increases, what always happens to your vapor pressure for any liquid? It also increases. Perfect, so that's it for all the vapor pressure.